So my name is Gabriel Bradford, and over the next few minutes, I want to show that boldly entering an unfamiliar space like podcasting can lead to surprising results for your product and yourself. And I want to illustrate this with an example from one of my favorite pastimes, mountain biking. A pretty common feature on a mountain biking trail is a drop. A drop, just like it sounds, is a place in the trail where the trail just drops beneath you. It's kind of like a jump, but instead of launching you up, the trail just falls away beneath you. Last summer, I was cruising down a trail near Las Vegas when I saw a drop a few yards ahead. Instinctively and incorrectly, I pulled the brakes, but I didn't slow down in time. Because I didn't have speed as I went over the drop, my front wheel nosedived and I followed suit, smashing my face into the ground below. Needless to say, my face was not pleased. Several weeks later, I rode the same trail. When I came to the previously painful drop, rather than pull the brakes, I sped up, pedaling into it. Because I kept my speed, as I went over the drop, my front wheel did not nosedive, my face stayed off the ground, and I was able to ride on, glowing with victory. The lesson I learned, if you don't want to crash, lay off the brakes. Instead, carry your speed into and over the obstacles in your trail. Now let's talk about podcasting. After brainstorming a few podcast ideas, I decided to make an ACT prep podcast. I've worked as an ACT tutor for several years, so I knew I was qualified, but I had no podcasting experience whatsoever but I went for it. The initial experience was jarring. I didn't like the sound of my own voice and hearing it on a recording made me cringe. I would suffer through the editing process before uploading my episodes, never to be heard again. I wouldn't even let my wife listen to my podcast while I was in the same room. I also felt awkward promoting the podcast for two reasons. Number one is that I'm dormant on social media, but to promote my podcast, I had to be active on Facebook, Reddit, and Twitter, engaging with others and creating my own posts. Number two is that marketing my podcast basically required me to market myself and my ACT score to people I know. For my tutoring, I'd advertise myself online and with flyers and high school bulletin boards, but promoting myself in person and with my personal Facebook account was new and uncomfortable to me. But I knew I would have to get over my angst and inhibitions if my podcast was ever going to go anywhere. So I gritted my teeth and pedaled into the drops in my podcasting trail. And as I did, good things started to happen. I began to have success on social media. After a few failed posts, I had some solid results on Facebook and Reddit, even though Twitter never really caught on. One post on the ACT subreddit got over 500 upvotes and several encouraging comments, the first breakthrough for me. I also reached out to Alan Chang, co-founder of Prep Scholar, one of the largest ACT prep companies in the country. I asked him to give my podcast a listen and let me know what he thought. He responded, giving me some insightful feedback and another confidence boost. My promotional efforts, as inept as they sometimes felt, have helped the podcast grow to 600 listens in nine different countries and 32 states. Only 20% of its total listens have come from Utah. It's amazing to think that of the people that have listened to my podcast, I don't know about 80% of them. The podcast has also become the first result on Spotify and appears in the top four results on Apple Podcasts with the search terms ACT Prep. Although it's relatively small for a podcast, its growth in listens and research has been fascinating to watch. As my podcast has grown, I've grown along with it. I noticed this a few weeks ago as I was interviewing for a summer internship. My podcast never came up, but during this interview, I felt more comfortable and controlled than I had in previous ones. Promoting my podcast had helped me learn how to promote myself. During my interview, I felt unusually relaxed when talking about my accomplishments and selling myself to the recruiter. In previous interviews, I would always tighten up when asked about what my greatest strengths were or what I could offer the company. This time, I was able to confidently give the recruiter specific reasons as to why I was the best candidate for the job. This was worlds away from responses I had given even months before. Besides helping me become a better self-promoter, my podcast also helped me clean up and polish my speech. Listening to and editing my own voice has helped me identify filler words and awkward parts of my speech that I had never noticed. As I've recorded episodes, my speech has improved, and it showed during the interview process. My responses to the questions were perceptibly clearer and more professional than they had been in previous interviews. Starting a new podcast, like writing a drop, can be challenging and intimidating. But lay off the brakes and ride straight into it. You might end up with a great podcast, or you might not. Either way, you will learn and grow in ways you never would have imagined. And you'll have a great ride as you do.